So today I'm going to be walking through how I play Home on the Range, and I'm in C tuning. So that's a C in the bass, a D, a, no, I'm sorry, a C, a B, no, I'm sorry, a C, a G, a B, a D, and a G. That's a little fishy. a little better. So the first thing I think about with any song is the chords. Now Home on the Range has uh, several chords and so if you're starting out back up is one of the best ways to learn a song uh, and so I just start out by backing up Home on the Range. Now there's actually seven chords that Home on the Range has. Uh, it has a C, it has an F major, it has an F minor, it has a D seventh, it has a G, I put a G seventh in, and there's an A minor in the chorus. So, and I'll put chord charts for each of them, but there's several ways you do the C, but when you're backing up, the simplest way to do a C is just on the bottom two strings or top two strings. In other words, two strings closest to the ground, furthest away from your head. Uh, those are the one furthest away from your head is the first string. Then as you're rising up toward the sky, second, third, fourth, fifth. So, how I do the C chord is on the second string, it's first fret on the first string, second fret. And the rest is open. Now there's another C if you slide those two fingers up to the fifth fret. That's a C, and both of them are on the fifth fret. And then if you slide one up to the eighth and the other up to the tenth, another C. And if you go all the way to the uh, 13th and 14th, that's the same kind of C that was just down there. So that's your C chord. Then you have your F chord going from the ground to the sky. That's three, one, two. There's a chord chart for those of you who understand those things. And I'm not telling you which fingers to use because to make those chords, because I use different fingers depending on the context. Uh, one thing though that I find very useful is to just keep my index finger on the second string first fret when switching between the C and F. Uh, and in that way it stays still and the other fingers do whatever they're doing. So then you have F minor, which is just like F major. Except the third string instead of second fret is first fret. 
if you just move that finger back, that puts tension, that puts strain on your hand, arm. And that's not comfortable, and that's not healthy. So what you do instead is your index finger, which is hanging on the C or whatever finger you're using, you just bar with it instead. Uh, I don't bar all of them, because that would be a muddy chord, a, a more complex, richer chord. I leave the C, the, the thick string, the fourth string open, and then the rest are bar. Much more comfortable. So that's your F minor. Uh, and then you have your D7, which is like your F, except what it is is going from the floor to the ceiling. You have open string, that's a zero, open, one, two, and a two. And then finally your G. Your G is very simple. On the fourth string, that's that thick string, four strings up from the ground, you just put one on the second fret. Now I haven't talked about A minor yet, it's very much like F, except instead of, and it's very much like C. So if you start out from the C, on the third string, instead of playing the open, you will want to use a finger to press the second fret, and there's your A minor. So those are all the chords you need to back up home on the range. It's really simple. Now, some people just use three chords, and I'll get into that and why that's a very uh, poor way of doing it. Uh, but in an emergency, you know, in a, in a survival context, uh, you may want to do that. Uh, but seven chords isn't too hard to learn. Oh, I didn't show you G seventh. When I'm actually playing the song, if I do G seventh, is I take the one that was on the second fret, fourth string, and I just move it up to the fifth fret, fifth fret. But if you're backing up and you really want the seventh to stand out, instead you leave your G where it was and just put a pinky or put a finger on the third fret, first string, first string, third fret. Or if you really want it to stand out, you do one first string third fret and second and second string third fret. That really stands out. Uh, but that might just be the easiest. Alright, so now we can back it up. Um, and you'll you'll hear where these chords come in. So we have a C. C, 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 and Some people just use three chords to back it up, and technically you can do that. In the key of C, which is the key I'm playing it in, uh, the three chords are C, F, and G. But you really, it, it would be like 
it would be like having the opportunity to eat a hamburger and instead eating a stale peanut butter sandwich. You know, those three chords, they're really great in a survival context. You know, you don't know the song. Most of the time, it's just going to use three chords. Uh, but if you know those extra chords, it just adds so much more expression. Let me do it the other way, where I'm just using the three chords, so you get an idea of what it sounds like. So give me a home where the buffalo and the deer and the antelope lay, where seldom is heard a discouraging and the skies are not sandwich version when you could have the hamburger so we're going to be using the other chords the good chords and if you know of any extra chords you like to throw in beyond the, just the, those seven please leave a comment or if you like to use different chords please leave a comment uh, I love I love learning new chords and where to put them Okay, so, so then from there, I think about the tune in the context of the chords. So I know most of the time that my fingers are going to stick around the C shape while I'm doing, when, when I'm playing the song, when I'm playing the song, I know most of my, the time the fingers are going to be in the C shape when I'm, when the backup chords are C, and somewhere in the F shape when the backup chords are F, and so on. So then I can just pick out the tune, keeping the chords in mind. And in fact, I can even pluck the rest of the chord for context. I'm going to do it without for now. my fingers are staying in the backup chord shapes. There's a few mistakes I made in terms of not having the fingers in the right shape at certain times. And if you were, if you caught those, good for you. You're paying very careful attention. So now uh, I did. I didn't give you which strings those are. You can do them on several strings, but it's just it's uh, third third in your C shape is third string second string and we're going from the ground so third from ground second from ground underneath third from ground so down. now we go second and then we do open first and then set it down on the first and then we go back one so that's uh, on the second string and then we do that open now we're switching to our F and it's third string, first string. And that's where F minor comes in. Uh, and then we go second fret on first string, back to third fret. You could do fifth string, but if you're playing the full song, you're gonna go up here. That's a five on the, a fifth fret on the first string. And then we're going jumping back to our C shape, and that's second string, 
and then we were doing our D7th shape. Second string, play it open. Play it on the first fret again. And then our first string. And that's where you switch to your seventh. Uh, and then we repeat for a uh, third. Open first, second fret first. That's uh, second string. Open third string in the F shape. First string. That's where you switch your F minor. Second fret on first string. Open back to string, second string, first fret. Open first. Open first string. And then you return to your second string, first fret to this. So then if you combine the chords with the notes. homework I don't know okay well I'll tell you how I play the chorus so that's where that other C comes in that's the five and the five on the top two strings the ones closest to the ground first and second that's five I go I, I and then I do a roll so in other words I play first string and then second string fifth string I go do the same thing except I just take these pods and I slide them down to the third fret. Except I do so after the third fret, I slide down to my C shape. other strings to accompany it. And I could do or I could do that would also work. Then you back to your stuff. That's all I do. A couple things real quick. One, uh, the whatever, you know, I don't use rules all the time in playing it. Basically, you can do arpeggios or rules just as long as you emphasize somehow, or, or just as long as you emphasize the melody note, uh, or Based on change, it stands out. That's a little bit more advanced, more bluegrassy way of doing things. It's easier if you just emphasize the melody note. Uh, then the the other thing I do, and actually right there, what I'm doing is I'm not using this hand to pluck that one particular note. You can though, and you may find it simpler to do it that way. Where I am using this hand to pluck it. For me, I just find it easier not to. Uh, this is something to keep in mind. Uh, I do, in terms of the embellishment, I have one embellishment and then also the. That's a little bit of an embellishment. Don't go overboard with the embellishments though, because you really want the tune to be audible. So.
little ending I'm doing uh, is a very simple embellishment. So I have my C, my C shape. And that's a forward move. So I go five, two, one. Then I go up where both of these are on the third fret. Except I do. Except I, it's, I end it by playing the chord. So anyway, that's how I do it. So thanks for watching. Leave any questions, comments. If there's anything you want me to be a little more detailed on, or if you're confused about something, or you want like how to make minors from majors, or something music theory related, uh, or how do I do this or that, uh, definitely leave a comment, or maybe even incorporate it in the video. If you want one-on-one -on -one things, I I do that, but I can chart, but I can do that, but I charge for that. I charge for my time. All right, so have a, a great day and have fun.